Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to create this logos showcase section over here using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So here we can see that there are multiple logos displayed over here and uh, they are moving like a slider. And it is also responsive, so if you decrease the width of the browser window. This is how it will look on smaller screens. We have lesser gap between the logos and also lesser height. And if you hover over these uh, logos, we can see that it stops. And if we go out of this uh, logos showcase section, then it starts again. So we're going to design all of this using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So let's get started. All right, so here I have created this folder called logos showcase and I just opened it with VS code. And I also have this folder called images over here and in that we have all these images which we're going to use in our design. So the first thing we will do is we'll create the necessary file. So let's create a file called index.html. Let's create another file called style.css. And let's create one more file called main.js. And let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And let's link our CSS file over here. And uh, here in the body, I'll just link the JavaScript file. Right now let's start with the markup of our design. So the first thing we will do is we'll create a container division and uh, let's give it a class of mark you container. And uh, if you go back to our design, here we can see that on the left side, we have this uh, area where the logos fade out and here also the logos fade in. So we need to have this uh, two divisions over here to make this effect. So for that, let's create two divisions and uh, let's name the first one mark you mask left and let's copy this and let's change this to right and we'll use some CSS to add this effect right here on the left and the right sides right now let's go ahead and actually create this logos track so let's go ahead and create a division with the class of mark you track now in this we'll create one more division and let's give it a class of logos slide and in that we'll have each of the logos so we will add logos inside division. So let's tap logo wrapper and here let's add the logo. So I'll just add an IMG tag and let's tap images forward slash. And let's add the logo over here. Now, since we are adding divisions around this image, you can also add text if you want right below the image. I'm just going to add the image and let's go ahead and copy and paste this a couple more times. And for the second one, let's change the logo to LinkedIn and then the next logo is Microsoft and then we have Sentry, VS Code, Pinterest. Let's add VS Code over here and uh, then we have Pinterest. And then lastly, we have Meta and Facebook. So we have already added Facebook. Let's add Meta. And I think that's basically it. So we have added all the logos in our HTML file. Now let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called Live Server installed in VS Code. So once you have this installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML file and click on open with live server. And here we can see that all the logos are displayed over here. Now let's go ahead and style this and make it look like this. So let's go to our style or CSS file and let's start adding some styles. First of all, let's target the body and let's set the margin to zero. And uh, now let's target the mark you container. So we have this main division with a class of mark you container and let's type mark you container. And let's add a margin top and bottom, which is margin block to 32 pixels. And uh, let's set the width to 100%. And uh, let's set the overflow to hidden so that anything outside this uh, division will not be displayed. And let's set the background color to white. And uh, let's add a box shadow. And let's set the values to 0, 0, 10 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1. All right, now let's go ahead and target this uh, logos slide division and we need to display all these logos one next to the other so let's type logos slide and let's set the display to flex and let's add a gap of 100 pixels and let's set the padding to 48 pixels top and bottom 50 pixels left and right and this is how it looks right now let's style these images so let's go ahead and type logo wrapper img and uh, let's set the height to 28 pixels and let's tap object fit to contain. And this is how it looks. 
right now let's add the left and the right divisions for this uh, fading effect so for that let's target this mark you mask left and mark you mask right so let's tap mark you mask left and let's set the position to absolute and we need to position this uh, relative to the mark you container so here for the mark you container let's set the position to relative and here let's go ahead and type top position to 0 and left position to 0 let's set the height to 100 percent of the parent and let's set the width to 128 pixels and now if we add a background color we can see that this is the element so we need to change the background color to linear gradient and here we need to type to right and first of all let's type white or we can just type the hex value and let's type 0 percent and then let's type white once again 40 percent and then let's type transparent and let's set it to 100 percent and this is how it looks so now we can see that we have this fading effect let's also add a z index of 2 so that it's above the other elements now let's copy the same thing and uh, let's paste it down here and here let's change this to right now here in the linear gradient we need to change this value to left and here instead of left we need to change this to right so now we can see that we have the fading divisions on both the sides let's also style the mobile version so when we are on smaller screens we need to change the height of the image so let's tap at media let's tap max width of 760 pixels and uh, let's set the logo wrapper image height to 24 pixels and uh, let's type a logos slide and let's set the padding to 24 pixels and 32 pixels and by default it was 48 pixels and 50 pixels and we'll also change the gap to 60 pixels and this is how it looks right now that we have styled it it's time for us to add the animation so we need to move it from the right to the left so let's go to the main.js file and first of all we need to target some of these elements so we'll target this mark your track and also the logos slide so let's go ahead and type const track equals document dot query selector mark you track and let's tap const logos slide equals document dot query selector logos slide now the next thing we will do is we will clone these logos a couple more times so that we have this smooth effect when the last logo ends we have the first logo displayed once again so now if we zoom this out here we can see that these are our logos now the facebook logo should be displayed over here once again and then the linkedin logo and so on so let's go ahead and add some code to clone these elements and for that let's use a for loop and let's type let i equals zero i is less than four i plus plus so this will run for four times and let's type track dot append child and here let's type logos slide and let's clone this so let's type clone node true and now we can see that it has cloned it four more times now these logos should not be cloned one below the other they should display on the right side so for that let's go back over here and let's target the container division which is mark your track so let's target that i'll just type mark your track let's see whether we have added some styles over here for mark your track and we haven't so here let's type display of flex and let's set the width to fit content and now we can see that all the logos are displayed one next to the other and if i zoom this out again here we can see that all the logos are displayed over here now you can decide to set this number according to your needs right now i set it to four and if i set it to two we can see that it clones these elements two times and if we zoom out a lot then we can see that we have this blank space on the right side so just to be safe i'm just using four you can use uh, your desired values over here All right now let's go back over here and uh, let's create some variables so let's tap let scroll position and by default we'll set it to zero and let's create a const called speed and uh, let's set it to one and let's create one more variable called is playing so if the animation is playing then this will be set to true so by default we'll set it to true and then let's create one more variable called animation frame id and we'll use this animation frame id to stop and play the animation all right so now let's go and create a function to do the scroll animation so let's type function scroll 
And first of all, let's check whether the animation is not playing. So let's tap exclamation is playing. And if it is not playing, then we need to return. So we will skip this function. And if is playing is true, then let's continue with our function. So we need to type scroll position and we need to reduce the speed value every time the animation runs. So let's tap minus equals speed. So it will reduce the scroll position every frame. And since we have set the speed to one, it will reduce it by one. And then let's create a const called slide width. And let's set it to logos slide dot offset width. Now this will give us the width of this uh, logo slide element. And we will use this width to see whether we have reached the end of our logos. So let's add an if condition over here. So let's tap if scroll position is greater than or equal to slide width. Now we need to ignore the minus sign over here because uh, since we are subtracting the speed value from scroll position, the value will be negative. So for that, we can just tap math dot apps and this will ignore the minus sign and give us the value. So here let's go ahead and type scroll position plus equals slide width. Now what this code will do is when we reach the end of our logo, so when we reach the last logo, it will set the scroll position value to the slide width. So it will again start from the slide width value and start subtracting the speed value from that. And in this way, it will keep on running. Right now, since we have this scroll position value, we need to use it to move our track. So we are accessing the track over here, which is mark your track. So let's type track dot style dot transform equals translate x and let's set the value to this scroll position. Now, since we need to add pixels after that, we will add all of this inside backticks. And here let's type dollar symbol curly braces and uh, let's type scroll position pixels. Right now, the next thing we will do is uh, we will use a function called request animation frame. Now this method is used to run animations smoothly on a browser. So let's pass this scroll function over here. So we will be calling this scroll function again and again using this method and let's store the animation frame ID. So we have already created this uh, variable. So let's tap animation frame ID equals request animation frame scroll. Now let's go ahead and call this scroll function. So now we can see that the logos are scrolling and we have the correct animation being added. We'll just increase the speed and let's see whether after the last logo, we have the first logo being displayed. So I just change this to 10. And here we can see we have the meta logo, Facebook logo. And we have the meta logo displayed once again. And here it is. Let's see whether we are getting the logo once again after the fifth time. And here we can see that the logo is being displayed correctly. So our logic is working all right. Now let's go back and uh, change the speed back to one. And uh, now let's add the functionality of pausing the animation when we hover over this. So for that, let's go back and here let's type track dot add event listener. And let's listen for the mouse enter event. And let's create an arrow function over here. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to set the is playing to false. So let's type is playing equals false. And then we will type if animation frame ID, then we'll just go ahead and cancel animation frame. And let's pass the animation ID over here. Right now when we leave the track, we need to start the animation. So let's type track dot add event listener. And let's listen for the mouse leave event. And uh, here, let's go ahead and type is playing to true. And let's call the scroll function right here. And now we can see that the animation is running. And if you hover over this, the animation stops. And if we leave our mouse, the animation starts again. So everything is working all right. Let's take a look at the mobile version and it is working all right over here as well. So that's basically how you can create this logos showcase section using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All right, so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.